Honing your artistic craft is really a journey. Elements of creation can take time to perfect, if we can perfect them. The one thing, however, we all can do right away is practice. It seems so simple, and it really is. Artist studies and general observational practice are amazing to our overall growth and honing our artistic voice. But I'm alluding to a specific practice or a rough draft of your current artwork, a trial run. Now I'm not even close to the first to mention this, nor am I the first to ignore this. Writing multiple compositional drafts improve your clarity, prose, and overall communication. Visual communication is no different. Creating a study or a series of studies before embarking on a new artwork will do exactly the same thing. Improve your communication and hone your voice. Creating smaller and quicker studies of our artwork help us hone our techniques, our color palette, our composition, our values, and our strokes and mark making. So many of us, and myself included, rush into new artwork because it's exciting and wonderful, and at times, completely unprepared for it. There are so many questions when beginning any new artwork. How well do my colors work together? Are my colors saturated enough? Does the piece need to be darker? How should I really render this piece? Should I use a lot of paint, a little bit of paint? Should I build up the textures? How should I build up the textures, etc. So many questions we think we can visualize, but we really need to see them in front of us to understand them and believe them. And the most important question, how do all of my decisions really work together? When exploring any new idea, there are so many visual and technical questions that must be solved. Sadly, seeing the solutions is the only way to really know, instinctually, what works best for that artwork. Exploring through photography, thumbnails, digitally or traditionally, allows us to better visually comprehend the creation. Sure, Scully, that's awesome. Let's do it. Let me clean up first. All right, Scully, we'll need an image. Whoa, that was fast, far out. Don't wink at me, Scully. For instance, would your image look better centered with a bit more negative space around the forms? Or would it look better justified to the left in a long, wide frame? Or justified to the right? Or, again, centered, but in a taller, more narrow frame? And within the frame, where you place your objects affects the image. Will you adhere to a symmetrical composition or an asymmetrical composition? Both have different pacings, meanings, and they communicate different feelings to our viewer and how our viewer experiences that artwork. Explore all possibilities to know how the piece needs to be created. Once deciding on the framing, now it's on to the palette. Exploring colors like composition gives the artist the confidence of knowing the most effective communication of their idea. The color palette and the composition of an image can be so layered and complicated in their conceptual meaning. We will need a whole series of videos discussing them. Not to worry, they're on their way. Until then, just play, explore, and with enough experimentation, you'll know what's the most effective way to create your artwork. Once you've established all the working logistics of the image, my recommendation, just practice it all once. Again, in a quicker study. Hopefully this will show you what you're actually really working on. So you can see all the different aspects of your image pull together and hopefully work in unity. How many studies should you actually make before getting into the final version? Some artists like myself live in spontaneity and the chaotic process of creation helps in itself the development of any artwork. But for consistency and when I really want to do a good job on something, I always try at least one study before my final version. While other artists thrive after multiple studies and drafts have been achieved, knowing and learning one's instincts and developing your own artistic process can only be learned through dedicated practice. And if you are unsure of yours, my recommendation is do more studies. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. Yes, and sadly, by doing more than you think you need, only then will you find out how much you actually did need. And that helps you refine your instincts by hovering in the moment of the study, it allowed me to connect with the piece to the point where I didn't just see it, I could actually hear it. But maybe that has nothing to do with doing the study. That might have to do with being around too many solvents in a day where I'm actually hearing pieces talk to me. Note to self, cap your solvent. A small rough draft study of your artwork doesn't have to take a long time. Again, the study doesn't have to be big, far from it. Making it smaller allows us to create it faster, to use less materials, which is important, Seeing the image smaller and condensed allows us to see the whole compositional silhouette so we understand how the image moves at a much more innate level. And oddly enough, 
Sometimes, the study or rough draft turns out way better than the final image. Because in my opinion, the study releases us from the burden of making quote unquote a good image. That can weigh us down. Thus, you can just relax with no pressure and react in the moment to the artwork. Now it's off to the bigger final painting. Hopefully I've solved a lot of my problems so I can be spontaneous in the moment, and when I encounter the newer problems, I'll have a better resolve to how to tackle them. Selfishly, I made this video as just a reminder to me. Michael, do more studies. Anyway, good luck everybody with your picture making, and remember, a bad day painting is still a good day. Michael, 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 Mr. Nolan. <laughs> the Academy has long ago figured out the formula for perfect art. The amount of studies do not waver between artist and silly amateur. In order to create a single finished artwork, an apprentice must first produce exactly 101 painted studies. Only after they've completed the required 147 charcoal drawings of, of course, their initial 12 marble carvings of their concept. Please stop your interruption of my power balance with your silly recommendations, Michael. Now please allow me to finish Survivor's masterpiece vital signs. But, uh, uh on your way out, could you adjust the volume, please? I... I can't... I can't seem to reach it. <laughs> you know, uh, Michael, please, adjust the volume. Please, it's just a little louder. Ah, oh, but it's Survivor.